A mystery in the mail, a forgotten film. It was shot right here in Massachusetts. But who shot it and where and why? This is very strange. An old-fashioned detective story. Mary's working the phones. I'm calling from the Chronicle program. I'm pounding the pavement. Just a guy looking for direction. And the moral of the story? Just imagine. No formulas, no consultants, just pure creativity. You're preaching, Peter. The case of the missing reel, next on Chronicle. Perhaps in writing, in cold, analytical, black and white, this incident will make some sense. I only hope I can reconstruct this strange affair in some semblance of order. Peter, I'm so glad you're here. What is it, Mary? That. That old projector? No, that film. It came in the mail. It was unsolicited. Get the lights, Peter. You won't believe this. Why, it's an old mystery movie. It's more than that. It was shot right here in Massachusetts. This is very strange. Just watch this. that bag, sister. What happened? There's no more film. The end is missing. Who sent you this? This man, John Potter, says he made this film and others like it back in 1952 for TV stations all over the country, and he made them in Springfield. This is amazing. TV could have been anything back then. Just imagine. No formulas, no consultants, just pure creativity. You're preaching, Peter. Don't you see, Mary? TV didn't have to happen only in Hollywood. It could have happened here. We could have been contenders. Enough! Where is this John Potter? I've got to meet him. That's the problem. No return address. Then I'm off to Springfield. I'll find this John Potter. It could be dangerous. You better take this. <laughs> Welcome to the past, Peter Mahegan. Choose your path well, for you'll be making this journey alone. Dennis, Chatham, I've gone the wrong way. Just a guy looking for directions. Couldn't help him, could you? Can't even help yourself. Perhaps a bargain, a deal, yes. That's the only answer. Peter, I've received a clue. Let's have it, Mary. Bob Jones wrote the scripts. Yes? This book I was sent says he works at radio station WSPR. WSPR, I'm on my way. Good. In the meantime, I've got a phone call to make. A radio guy, huh? I'm sure a fellow broadcaster will give me the straight story. Why, that old radio station's been gone for years. Look out, fella. You almost killed yourself. This is a cowboy job. Hello? Hello, this is Mary Richardson. Is this Nancy Carlton? Yes. I'm calling from the Chronicle program. No kidding. Yes, Channel 5 in Boston. Why, that's only two miles from here. No, actually, I'm about 100 miles from Springfield. Say, you're not trying to be clever. Clever? I'll say it was. Why, that witch hung up on me. A 
another package. Could this be more film? Peter, I've been sent another film. More clues, Mary? Peter, I'm worried. The film says never go back. Listen. To live in the past is to perish in the present. He had to know it was happening to him. Well, that explains a lot. What do you mean? I mean, people are acting very strangely around here. I have a name for you. Look for Nancy Carlton. I called her on the phone and she hung up on me. I see. Would you like a room, sir? No, I'm looking for Nancy Carlton. Nancy Carlton, a wonderful girl, a wonderful girl, but a tragic victim of circumstance. Is she here? Oh, good heavens, no. She couldn't afford to stay here. Too expensive, of course. Whoa. Hello, this is Peter Mahegan. Are you Nancy Carlton? Do you know John Potter? I know who you are. I know what you want. I'll never let you in. Never. Linda, did you hear anything last night? Anything unusual last night? Yes, I did. It was that man, that awful man on the beach. He said he'd come back, and he did. He tried to break in. He tried to... First episode, Mary Richardson discovers a strange film with no ending. It was made by this man, John Potter, nearly 50 years ago. Now, Peter Mahegan is searching the streets of Springfield, Massachusetts, in the hopes of finding the elusive Mr. Potter. I bet you that guy up there could help me. Excuse me, sir. I'm Peter Mahegan. Just a minute. Why is he chasing me? It was just a story. Can't he understand that? That's right, pal. It's just a story. Who is it? It's Peter Mahegan. May I come in? Why are you here? What do you want from me? Do you remember acting in a film called Meet the Victim? I don't remember. Come, come now. You must remember something. I remember a windmill. Its blades seem to turn in rhythm with my dreams. You're in deep now, Peter Mahegan, for there's more danger just outside. He should be out any minute. Don't worry, he will be. Permanent. Go on, get out. I don't want any more talk. No more talk! Ooh. Baseball. There ought to be a law. Perhaps a trip to a local television station might provide a clue. Excellent idea. Just one minor flaw. No one here can help you. You see, there was no local television in Springfield back in 1952. Hello, Mary. Any new info? I got a postcard from the Encore Players. The Encore Players? 
Don Thomas and Jean Burns were in the old movies, and tonight they're acting in a play in Springfield. Where, Mary? At St. Luke's Church. I'm on my way. Finally, some answers. Behind this door, Jean Burns. She starred in Meet the Victim 45 years ago, and so did Don Thomas. I went there because Sidney Cockrell had urged me to do so. But uh, Mr. Shaw's version of the trial does not please me. He's far too sympathetic to the Protestants. Gene Burns, what do you remember about John Potter? He got in touch with a number of actors in town and asked if we'd like to do some of these 15-minute mystery series. Tell me about it. It isn't finished. Well, I must see it when it's done. Here, give me your things. No, not yet. I need money. Well, well, it was uh, exciting, but a little bit frightening because we were very young and, oh, movies, to be in a movie. Don Thomas, what do you recall? There was one short film that we did on the Cape that I was there for, a uh, thing called The Man on the Beach, in which I was a beach bum, which was typecasting for those days. Don't you dare touch me, beach bum. I apologize for my lack of social graces. Maybe the boys at the bar can give me a few tips. I was so raunchy. Nobody uses that word anymore. Raunchy. Yeah. Gene and Don put me on to more players in this mystery. Bunny and Doug Buick. Bunny Buick, did John Potter ask you to jump off a bridge? I was going to commit suicide. And then the robber came along, Bob Burns. We pretended that he went in the, by mistake with a little wrestling. He went over and not one patrolman or policeman came to interrupt this. Doug Buick, what about these old films? I think they've held up very well. Good heavens, half a century ago? <laughs> Hard to believe, isn't it? The sad fact is that many of the people in these films are no longer alive. But Doug and Bunny knew where I could find my man. Hello, Mary. I found John Potter. Where, Peter? New Jersey. No, Peter, not Jersey. I'm on my way. I traveled Massachusetts searching for John Potter, the man who made the Meet the Victim movies nearly a half century ago. Now, here I was in New Jersey, about to meet the man I'd driven a significant distance to see. Why, John? Why? I wanted to uh, get the experience of doing a live-action dramatic film. Is it true there are people in the credits who didn't exist? Yeah, yeah. well, we want, I wanted to make it look like a bigger outfit than it was. It was really only two people, just Bob Jones and myself. A shoestring budget, I understand. I figured out a budget of about $3,000 for each show, but all the actors got paid. That's one thing. They got paid $10. I heard you paid a man to write music for you. I said, I'll offer you $100. And his eyes lit up. He said, $100? That's, an awfully, that's awfully good. He said he'd like to do that. So that's what he did. I had an original. He wrote an original score for the man on the beach, and I, he, he scored it for about, I think, four players. Where did you get your ideas? We got our ideas of the ending types of things from Hitchcock pictures, a uh, twist ending. The only way you can have a movie of any kind is to have some conflict in it between two people. Somebody wants something, the other person doesn't want to let them have it. Until you, don't, until you have that, you don't have a story. You made one show in color. The color television wasn't very common then. I felt it would be in the future. So that's what we did. I've been told you rented a cottage on Cape Cod and made a film there in one weekend. We rented for just three days. It cost us, each person, $11 a piece. We had the old cast and crew in one big house, cooked their own meals, got a, got a lobster, let the lobster loose in the kitchen, and had a great time with it. <laughs> it was funny. 
Now, I understand these films ran on local television stations all around the country. Did you ever hear from viewers? I never uh, heard from anybody uh, except someone in, in West Springfield. <laughs> of course, they, they were looking at Channel 8 down in New Haven at that time. And so there you have it, Mary. He held on to those films for 45 years. Will anyone ever see them again? I'm glad you asked, Mary. You see, John Potter has just put all seven shows out on home video. No. How can you get them? Just watch this. Get a pencil and paper ready, as tonight you have a rare opportunity to see early television made right here in Massachusetts. You can receive all seven episodes of the 1952 Meet the Victim series on VHS cassette by sending 2445 to John Potter, care of the New Jersey Veterans Home, One Veterans Way, Paramus, New Jersey, 07652. That's 2445 to John Potter, care of the New Jersey Veterans Home, one Veterans Way, Paramus, New Jersey, 07652. You may never have this chance again. Do you mean to tell me that... Don't say it, Mary. This whole episode was just one giant infomercial? No, Mary. This is unwritten history. We'll never see anything like this again. Local television drama. But, Peter, did John Potter make any money with these shows? No, he broke even, but that's not the point. Imagine the possibilities back then. No consultants, no formulas, just pure creativity. He's a sick boy. He needs help. John Potter knew. He saw the potential of local television 50 years ago. Only now is his story being told. That man was a true pioneer. Just a street to most people, a lot of noise and movement. But to me, it's something more than that. It's copy, and not pleasant copy either. The pages of my magazine, Fabulous Detective, are crammed with violence of every degree. The kind of violence that happens around the clock behind that facade of steel and stone called Main Street, USA.